Hello, and welcome back to the Nothing Notable podcast. Today, um, we're going to start a series, uh, which we typically do nowadays. Um, We're going to start reviewing what we do in the shadows. So today, we're going to review episodes one through three. In a few weeks, we'll review episodes four through six, and then we'll do seven through nine. And then finally, we'll finish uh, with the finale. And I, I think it's just going to be an interesting uh, dynamic, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. And I'm excited to talk about it, because this season so far has been really good. Yeah, I'm I'm thrilled to be talking about it, because, I mean, even if only like five people listen to this, that could be five more converts that we add to the, to the what we do in the Shadows fandom. Because I really do think that this is the best comedy on television. I mean, the first episode of this season, and we'll we'll go, this is just the overview, but we'll go more in depth. The first episode of this season and overall the first three episodes, I just sat back and I was like, the king's back. I love these characters. I love this version of a sitcom. I love the sensibility of the show. Like it's, it's, I think Rolling Stone said that it's like the smartest silly show on television. And this show is definitely silly. And these first three episodes are very silly and i am very excited to talk about the choice that they make as to what kind of show it wants to be going forward based on the explosive season two finale and how they deal with that yeah in, in the first episode <laughs> so yeah the, we'll we'll go in we'll yeah, go in and um just like real fast on on my overall thoughts on what we do in the shadows i love the film it took me a second to watch the show um but i have since watched it in the last year and again, I, I say everything you say. It, it's incredible. Probably best said calm on television right now. And also, it, it is so unique uh, in its format because it is a mockumentary. Yeah. And we've seen that done to death. But it is a supernatural mockumentary, which like makes it all the more impressive, but also like all the more funny. There's just like a lot more they can do that you can't do in, say, like The Office. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do in the shadows, you can really be in the real world but have some clever camera tricks and uh some clever you know like just like the bat disappearing is always fun (laughs) and like people turning into bats and like everyone's trying to catch up with the cameras and everything and uh, yeah a supernatural mockumentary is just fantastic and it's a great idea and i still think what we do in the shadows the movie and the tv show is the only thing i can think of like that Obviously, the show is is co-created by Jermaine and Taika, uh, who directed the original movie that we love so much. And and at this point, now that we're three seasons in to the show, I am more than happy to say that I love the show so much more than I love the movie. And I love the movie. I just think that the... It's funny because when I saw What We Do in the Shadows, the movie, and I'll try not to do too much about the movie in the first two seasons, but when I saw the movie, I was like, this is like perfect the way it is like this is a a great movie and then the show came out and it's like no actually it wasn't this is perfect this is the perfect version of that idea you could do all the grounded character stuff that you get out of the office which is what made the office like one of the best comedies ever so you get those heartfelt moments with the characters with with guillermo and with nandor and with everybody else uh but then you also get all the stupid silly shit that i love just as much and the show never really sacrifices either one in order to achieve, you know, either one. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about, again, if this series is successful, like we'll definitely talk about the first two seasons eventually, but um, we're just going to put out feelers here and uh, just talk about one of our favorite shows. Um, and with that, uh, let's just like jump in Daniel to season three. Um, season two just leaves off on a huge cliffhanger. Yeah. Um, crazy. Guillermo basically is arrested. And, uh, the first episode of season three, episode one is entitled the prisoner. Again, this aired on September 2nd, 2021. Uh, the prisoner, uh, is the title of the episode. Uh, Guillermo's fate hangs in the balance as the vampires receive a promotion. (laughs) Um, which is, uh, I mean, that really is the episode. Um, <laughs> uh, just to like quickly recap, uh, Guillermo's, uh, arrested because he just killed like all the vampiric council. Mm-hmm. Um, and in a, in a great sequence at the end of season two, um, and everyone is like super afraid of Guillermo. They think he can hypnotize people, um, all this stuff. Uh, they have him in like a, a, ca- a giant, like comically <laughs> giant cage in the basement that like he, he can clearly like fit his like head through. Yeah. Um, 
it was, it's just like very big. They, they can like definitely touch him. Um, Nadja and everyone feeds him chicken, raw chicken, which is funny. And you who? Um, <laughs> and then, you know, uh, things escalate. And then all of a sudden, like uh, Christian Shaw comes in at the end and then gives uh, everyone uh, a chance at the vampiric throne um, because Taika Waititi uh, in a fun little cameo. He is looking old, but like he still looks great. <laughs> Um, he offers, uh, Nadja, uh, Laszlo and Nandor and Colin Robinson, of course, um, just to be the, the Kings of the vampire council, uh, essentially, which is very funny. And then the last, uh, shot is a comedic, <laughs> uh, of, of everyone besides Laszlo fighting over the throne, uh, that is, uh, just in the vampire council. And again, the vampire council is just underneath, um, just like. Uh, a normal building in in a downtown area yeah it's just another uh, floor really on a building it's just- <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and uh yeah that's just a quick recap of the episode and um yeah dan do you do you want to just start talking about it oh uh, yeah some stuff you liked um some funny bits mainly like this is just going to be us talking about how like the bits and like yeah perhaps like i there, there's some story elements in this one that could could go on through the season um my first question, I guess I'll like I'll like lead the discussion yeah, here. Yeah, shoot. Um, since I've been talking so much, um, <laughs> but I'll say, do you think the Vampire Council has other plans um, for our main characters? That's interesting. Um, honestly, I hadn't even considered it. I, I do think when I I alluded to this moments ago about what kind of show this show wants to be. At the end of season two, I was left with my jaw on the floor because I thought, oh, they're setting up for the final two seasons. They're going to separate Guillermo yeah. from the group. He's going to go down the Van Helsing path. And then we're going to come back together, meet and have this insane climax that kind of gets like less comedic over time and a little bit more dramatic. Obviously, it's still a comedy, but like, you know, we actually have like a these mortal rivals going against each other. And so I was kind of expecting it to go that way. So when I was first watching this episode, I did feel like they kind of they kind of backtracked a little bit. They were like, okay, it's not that serious. Yeah. Like, it's kind of just funny that you killed all the other vampires. And then Guillermo also is just like, yeah, even though I know I'm a Van Helsing, like, I still just want to be your familiar or I eventually want to become a vampire. Well, technically, sorry, technically Guillermo's their bodyguard. Bodyguard now, now so. which is technically an improvement. And they, <laughs> and they they changed his title on the thing, which is very funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, now in episodes, he's just Guillermo vampire bodyguard. <laughs> um. But so initially I was like, I, I, this is funny, but like, I feel like they, to, you know, pun intended, but they sort of took the teeth out of that big season two finale. No, 100%. I, I mean, they're resetting the sitcom format. Yes, that, that exactly. Made. That's exactly what they're doing. And however, if the Vampire Council does have uh, ulterior motives, then they could put the teeth back in and just sort of delay it for a season. Base. you know they could come back to it at the end exactly. of the season which i think is i do think that's what they're going to do i do think that there are more plans whether the plan is as simple as just let them like mess up until they destroy themselves or they're going to bring in more people from i don't know europe uh from from transylvania or the goal was always to right. unleash the the ancient one that's in that weird room in episode two um right right whatever the plan or maybe, was you know Wesley Snipes will be back on a laptop. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> I do love that moment in the episode too, where the <laughs> Nando was just like, and yeah. Wesley Snipes <laughs> was over there on the laptop. <laughs> over there on the laptop. Yeah, <laughs> it's just like you have to. Like that was one of the funniest <laughs> things ever in the show. Um, but no, like, like, like you said, though, like since season one, though, the the Vampire Council has kind of been on their ass. Mm-hmm. So like. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the season, this is why I brought up the question, like I wouldn't be surprised at the end of the season if they, they kind of flip it on its head and it's like, well, no, they're still obviously mad about all those vampires dying, um, but we can't afford Taika and Jermaine for the whole season. So <laughs> yeah. here they are in the last episode. Um, but yeah, it seems like they could be building to that. But also like, again, it's like, what is this show? Is it going to be more episodic, funny sitcom, or is it going to be, you know, a, a sprawling epic about like the Van Helsing family and a bunch of vampires living in Long Island together. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, that's, I think that's the question that Rick and Morty always 
is is juggling with too yeah um and i think modern sitcoms just have to do that in general yeah and and i don't think that it was a bad choice i, I either way that they decided to go if if guillermo did end up out of the house for this season and went on his own path that would be a really interesting show but i'm just as happy because like at the end of the day i keep saying it's a super silly fun show and it is my favorite comedy and so part of me is like i don't want to i don't want to lose that you know so i'm yeah. i am glad that they're going to just do more silly stuff which which is always fun and this episode is a perfect episode of what we do in the shadows i love this episode so much because you get a little bit of the story you get all the fun character stuff you get some just like really great stupid bits I, one of my favorite things about the show is the way that all the vampires interact with guillermo the way that matt barry calls him gizmo you know the way that gizmo yeah the way that that I mean, in episode two, when he's up in the vent, <laughs> Nandor's like, you little yeah, rascal, right. <laughs> get out of the vent. Um, but in this episode, it's like, it's that to the utmost degree. They put him in this giant cage and they're underestimating his ability because he just can get out whenever he wants. They think he eats raw chicken, so they keep just throwing it at him. They're doing like this very ritualistic thing. Uh, Colin Robinson really likes scat now, which is really funny. I thought that was incredibly funny. Um, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. everything about all of that was perfect but it also shows like how much he guillermo does care about them too because when he goes out all he's doing is cleaning up for them and then just like <laughs> getting a meal occasionally yeah um and that's just so guillermo it's it's uh, i mean harvey again we'll talk about him a lot yeah. like he gives by far one of the best performances in the entire show um and everyone does everyone is like everyone's an all-star in this show it, it's like such a good farce and comedy um but like guillermo has like a tough job because he's for for lack of a better term he is like the grounded character um mm -hmm. like he has absurd like wants to be a vampire obviously but like comparatively to everyone else he's like the normal person he's like someone yeah. like you would hang out with um and could see in the real world but yeah guillermo's great in this episode and it really just shows just it's an it would be impossible to do the show without him because he mm -hmm. he adds so much to their dynamic um because then i feel like colin robinson just kind of becomes the punching bag in some ways which yeah one of my favorite bits of the episode was when colin robinson's like talking and like you just think he's like <laughs> yeah. by himself and then everyone's just like shut the fuck up colin <laughs> robinson like we're figuring shit out right now like shut up and what's funny about that too because like that actually speaks to the dynamic of all these characters also because they're they're acting like they're in a hurry but it's taken them a month to come to this decision <laughs> you know yeah. like th yeah. there is really no rush <laughs> like if they were actually on the run they'd already be dead right um you know so um but yeah uh anything else on episode one anything else you want to touch on yeah two more things on this episode then we'll move on to the next one because i guess this one's sort of well yeah this one segues into the next because i love that we have like a new place you know, like we get the vampire Council, the yes. library and all of the like old stuff. And in the second episode, we get that cloak and all of that. Just like they're they're reintroducing a bunch of new sets and locations and just visual tableaus, just things to look at. And and this ep this season, right from the get go, the very first shot is of the house and it just feels more expensive. I feel like the reaction to the show's second season, which came out during the pandemic, was so positive and and i think a lot of people became very attracted to the show because everyone was inside watching television that they i, I would imagine that the budget was increased because it does feel like a more expensive show the sets are seemingly bigger the lighting seems a little bit better like everything about it just seems a little bit more expensive it still feels like what we do in the shadows but it feels like it's at the budget that it was supposed to be at all along yeah it's just again the lighting has been so much fun this season and again maybe i'll like rewatch like the other seasons and realize it has similar lighting but i don't know there's like a lot of greens and like just spooky looking colors which is like really great um yeah great lighting so far i love this first episode this first episode like really really it was a big deal for me because like this show could have gone off the rails it can still go off the rails at any point because it's so high concept and it's so absurd um but it was just not it was just very reassuring that that the king was back you know sitting on the throne yeah and who will sit on the throne at the end? Um, probably Laszlo, because he doesn't want it. Because <laughs> he can't be fucked. He can't be fucked. Yes. <laughs> um, Bat. That is our first impression of Matt Barry <laughs> on a podcast, which is cool. Um, cool. 
Let's move on to the second episode, which aired the same night. Uh, second episode is called The Cloak of Duplication. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll, I'll spoil this. It was, This was my favorite episode of awesome. the three so far. Um, not that we'll rank them at all, because, again, it's episodic. It's just supposed to be fun goofs every season. But, yeah, and the description of this one is a forbidden artifact is used to help Nandor court a health club employee. <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically this episode, um, Nandor, um, is attempting to, her name's Meg, right? Yeah, Meg. Uh, to, to woo Meg, uh, who is just like a contemporary, uh, person Mm -hmm. and just works at a gym that Nandor goes to. Um, one of the best gags, one of the best sight gags. And I like laugh so hard because I like, it's so clever and it's like something I just forget about the show. Um, Nandor's like lifting weights. Yeah. And then it pans over to the mirror and you can't see him because you can't see vampires. <laughs> um, and it was just, I laughed so hard. I was like, awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, it's just like the setup is so clear, but you're not expecting it because you like and appreciate Nandor so much as a character and you just forget he's a vampire sometimes because yeah. you're just like, Oh, this is just a character I like. Um, one of the best gags. And then the side story in this one is, um, I, I'd say like they're both kind of B plots, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. It's a very simple episode. But the A plot is, I, I guess, technically is Nander courting this woman. Um, while Nadja and Colin Robinson go out um, <laughs> to a local vampire uh co-ho, uh, co-op, something like that. They're all living yeah. together. Um and just get basically get their dues um, for the vampire council. There's like an energy vampire that just smokes weed and like talks about philosophy and shit, which is like also really funny. Um, and then, well, like Colin Robinson kind of talks to him about like wondering where like energy vampires come from. Yeah. And that's definitely going to be like a plot line this season. And yeah. like Colin is going to get his own episode. Um, and I'm super excited because I think that this is only like the third energy vampire we've seen um because vanessa bayer yeah was um was energy vampire in season one and then this guy in season three um and yeah I, i'm very interested to see where this goes because i i think it's fun to explore all these characters um but again the, the most the most fun of this episode and the reason you do this episode is so that kevon novak can play every hell yeah character yes um, with the cloak of duplication which uh christian shaw tells them not to touch <laughs> and they just touch that the whole le- they actually bring it home is the crazy <laughs> part like they- <laughs> and i'm curious if that's ever gonna come back it probably won't but we'll see um how how nandor like wants to go about wooing uh meg because again nandor was like king and he like like fucked he had millions of wives <laughs> like he did all this stuff he like conquered and then over the course of him just being alive for too long he's just become weaker <laughs> um which is just really funny as a concept and now he's just like very shy and doesn't know how to talk to women um and yeah so basically he's trying to get laszlo who is the certified ladies man i guess <laughs> uh to just put on the cloak of duplication and like hit on her um and obviously it works very poorly because colin robinson actually goes for it first and then laszlo <laughs> goes first and then nandor actually goes in and then she's a lesbian and it's just like a really funny like genuine thing um and Kevon Novak gives such a good performance, like with all of those, obviously. Also, Guillermo goes too, I, I forgot to mention. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we'll talk about that part later a bit. Um, but yeah, basically, it's just so Kevon Novak can play every single character, um, every single main character in the show. And it was a lot of fun. And it was just like a genuinely like fun episode. And then at the end, you get the stinger with Nadja putting on the cloak and being like, "I we can finally do that thing. We always wanted to try, <laughs> Laszlo. Um, and that's just like a great way to end the episode, but very funny. Um, again, very episodic classic. Um, and I love when they go in the real world and, uh, it's just fun that Nandor goes to the gym at night. Yeah. I love this episode as well. I think, um, episode one is like a, it's a great episode. It is functionally like a cleanup episode though. We have to clean up the plot from the season two finale and then like reset. Like you said, this episode though gets to set up what all the characters like motivations are for the whole season and like what they're going to be going for with 
Nandor, he's looking for connection. And then with Colin Robinson, he's interested in like where he comes from. And so that's going to be a thing. And and then also in pairs, the whole Nandor versus Nadia, who's going to really take the throne for the Vampiric Council. Like that, that dynamic is really interesting because she is really like very aggressive and violent and willing to take action. And then Nandor is not. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about Nadja this episode. Because mm-hmm. um, one of my main complaints about the first episode is I, I feel like Nadja didn't do too much. And say, honestly, same, kind of the same with the third. Like, I, I just love Nadja so much. And yeah. I think she's... It's such an incredible performance, but it's also just, like, such a good character. And I... Th- this episode, like, shows why she's awesome. She, like, gets shit done. Yeah. She literally just kills a vampire uh, in a very, like, quick way. And, uh, yeah, again, like you said, she just gets shit done. And she's awesome. She really is. I mean, God, every single actor in this cast is just on another level. And, and this is the episode for Kayvon Novak. So, I do think we should have the conversation right now. Because I think yeah. through two seasons and three episodes... I think I'm ready to put him on the, the, I don't know, the pantheon, maybe the top 50 greatest performances on television, like comedic performances on television that I've ever seen. Yeah. He is, he can't miss. Every single line no. delivery is absolutely perfect. Not a single line fucking goes by guy. where, yeah, this fucking guy. Every time he, every time he extends the last two syllables of a word like when he says what to do about Guillermo or I yeah. in, in this last season when he uh, finds out that his country is no longer a country he's like <laughs> I have no country I have no home <laughs> like he holds out these syllables so yeah. long and just sort of the daintiness with his hands also when he does stuff like that the the softness of his character there are particular line deliveries that you know, I, I say this whenever we do a movie that like we really love, whenever we review a movie that we love, there are just some actors that that can just do line deliveries that you as a regular person could not think to do. Like when if someone handed yeah. you a script, you would read it and almost 99% of the people would read it the same way and they would say it the same way. There's that 1% though that interprets it slightly differently and delivers it in a way that no one else can. And that's Kayvon Novak in this show. Every single line if I was just presented those lines on a page, I couldn't make them funny. And the show is very well written, obviously. So I'm not saying anything negative about the writing, but just like the way that right. he elevates everything is, I mean, it's it's so impressive. Like he he really is just climbing up my power rankings. I think that this is like a complete tour de force performance. It was clear from the very beginning of the series and it just, he keeps getting funnier too. And this was just a great showcase episode for him. No, exactly. And he plays every character. He plays Colin Robinson and Laszlo and Guillermo. And and it's just, it all that also just shows how good of an actor he is because he really yeah. does get everyone's ticks. And yeah, no, it's, it's, it's wonderful, fantastic. And also, it, it also speaks to um, Guillermo and Nandor's dynamic. Yeah. Because uh, they have, they have like a super interesting... It's not even like familiar and vampire anymore. They're they're genuinely like I want to say they're close f- they're they're close friends who like like might love each other <laughs> like a yeah. little more than friends. Like who knows, but it's just it was just a really sweet moment when Meg and N- N- like Guillermo dressed as Nandor are talking. Um and then Guillermo's like, "Whoa, like I I like never thought of it like in that way. And like, I, I feel the same way. I'm like, I guess I never thought about it in that way, but like, yeah, they, they do love each other in like a special sort of way. And like, that could even be like brother, like as close as brothers and stuff. But, um, I think Guillermo, like, I'm very interested to see where the end of the series brings Guillermo, Guillermo and Nandor, um, because their whole relationship is kind of weirdly enough, like the heart of the show, yeah. um, even though it's always played for laughs and like, there's that episode in season one or two where Nandor's like holding Guillermo up and he's like flying yeah. and then he like falls out of his sweater. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just interesting. And I love, I love those little moments when it's like still funny, but it's also like adding to like, what, yeah, what is this dynamic? And like, who are they? Cause it evolves and it, it is like a super interesting um, pair of characters, uh, Nandor and Guillermo. And that is what the show is about. The very first shot of the whole show is Guillermo. And he's like, it's time to wake with the master. And so 
that is what the show's going to come down to. I, I, I can't imagine that the show ends on a happy note because it is. Yeah. It is these two characters that really do love each other, whether that's in a platonic way or in a romantic way, and they're afraid to admit it. But then on top of that, they are mortal enemies. In their blood, they are mortal enemies. Yeah. And and that's also why Guillermo is like one of the best characters on the show is because like he wants so bad to be a vampire, but it's literally within his blood to not be. He is the mortal enemy of the vampire, so he cannot be a vampire. And that's just good TV writing. So he's constantly yeah. chasing something that he just cannot have. And when he realizes that, when the show comes to an end, I think that the last season is going to get emotional. Like, I really do. Because these two characters yeah. love each other. But it's going to end in a bloodbath. Yeah, 100%. It was just so sweet, this episode. I just loved that, yeah. Because he's like, it's awkward because we work together. And <laughs> Meg is like, you should tell yeah. him how you feel. He might have feelings for you. He's like, what? No. He's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he freaks out and leaves. I was just going to say, the stinger with Meg is like really funny where... Yeah. Um, like she's like oh i'm like a lesbian like i i like women and then like and the doors are like you like women <laughs> and then she's like yes and he's like i like women and she's like yeah and he's like and i like men and she goes i don't like ben no and he goes oh. and it's just like very funny to like, you just, will like, forget ex- everything <laughs> yeah you will forget everything <laughs> just and then of course we really get good. the classic the classic Nandor line as he knocks out the big buff dude that works at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> this fucking guy. This fucking guy. He, he, that's his catchphrase. That's his catchphrase. Yeah, like 100%. What a great catchphrase. Yeah. Also, backtracking real quick to Colin Robinson, just shout out to every everything about Colin Robinson, but just the idea that he's like, I'm going to go neg this woman. And his uh, <laughs> when he first shows up, I laughed so goddamn hard when he just walks in. He's like, hey, dipshit. Hey, dipshit. <laughs> and she's like, what? <laughs> it goes so bad, so fast. And also, I do love, since it is a mockumentary, I do love when they acknowledge the cameras. And uh, mm-hmm. when when the, the dude that works there, like the bouncer, basically, when he shows up, he's like, get these cameras out of my face. It's always just a nice reminder that like, oh, yeah, this is a documentary yeah. crew following a bunch of vampires, which is just so funny inherently that whenever I'm reminded of it, I do get a big laugh out of it. Yeah. That. And also, like, there's those great moments where Colin Robinson looks directly at the camera and yeah. they did that with him as Nandor and it came out really <laughs> nicely. Um but yeah, what a funny second episode. Um, yeah, anything else on the cloak of duplication? Um, just that I, it, it feels so clear to me that this will become an important item going forward. Yeah, and and it it didn't like rub me the wrong way. Normally, when you introduce a MacGuffin like that, it's like, oh, we'll be we'll be seeing this later. But even though I acknowledge that we will be seeing this later, it's just so funny and it provides so much comedic opportunity and. Within the context of this episode, it was amazing. But then going forward, I think that it actually has like dramatic potential, you know, especially for for Guillermo and for Nandor potentially. So I think that having things like that in the world um, is really nice going forward. And it's just nice that they're continuing to build out that world and continuing to show more weird shit. Like we love the hat, the cursed hat, the the bloody stupid <laughs> cursed hat from the first two seasons. Stuff like that is yeah. just really fun to introduce. Yeah, just artifacts in general are, are just really cool um, because they're vampires and they're all old and it's great. Um, speaking of old, mm. um, the next episode, season three, episode three, aired uh, September 9th a few days ago um, and it's entitled Gale. Um, an old flame returns and an ancient vehicle is resurrected. <laughs> Um, this was a fun episode, uh, overall, I, I think it's definitely like my least favorite of yeah, the, the three. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about why, um, specifically, cause I, I think what we do in the shadows, the movie and the TV show always do something this episode does. And I don't really ever like what they do with it. Um, and I hope they just, I, I, the, the reason I like that it's more of a plot point in the movie, um, in the TV show, it's just like an episode, like it's one episode. It's like a half an episode per season. Cause I think it only happened in season one. Um, anyways, Gail is an old flame of Nandor's. Um, we get a funny thing at the beginning where everyone's like, where's Nandor? Where's Nandor? Um, and again, they just find him in a hotel and he's like having sex and Gail's just like, Oh, Hey y'all like, Hey everyone. Uh, great opening. And also just like a reminder that all of these people have lived together for like 
Colin Robinson's under 100, but like the rest of them have lived together for like centuries. Um, Mm -hmm. And they're just so comfortable with each other because like, again, they, they, their lives are like so much longer than like the normal human's life. Yeah. Um, So literally anything they're scared of or like worried about like physically with each other is nothing because they've seen everything. Yeah. Um, And I just thought that was a fun way to open it. Um, But yeah, again, you talked about this earlier. Um, Nandor's looking for connections. Um, and with this one, he really like wants to propose with Gail. He like, she's a person he saw like in the 1970s and then on and off for like 40 years, which is also like a, a great, a great concept of like an on and off relationship for four years, but yeah. multiply it by 10 exactly. uh, because <laughs> he's uh, immortal is, <laughs> is really great. Um, and again, this is like a pretty, uh, Kevon Novak focused episode. Um, and he does uh, the emotions. Well, he does the silly, like he's like in just a t-shirt for a little bit, um, which is really funny. And, uh, overall good and then uh the subplot b plot in this one is colin robinson and laszlo fixing up uh laszlo's old car that the vampire cancel stole um and they find that uh by opening uh, a secret door because there was a porn book that laszlo notices was never in hardback and he's like this must be fake and then he like pulls it and then there's his old car um and then again the great part about just like a stupid subplot like this uh they can't get the car out of the library through the traditional door that they found um so they take apart the entire car piece by piece and then put it back together outside and then christian shaw comes in for like a nice little cameo in this episode and it's like we had a fucking door right there like what the like that's an artifact you can't just fucking destroy it and then she leaves um and then there's a kickball game at the end um because turns out gail was actually uh scratched by a werewolf uh and she is part werewolf or she's full werewolf now um and then at the end of the episode nadja kicks her in the face with a kickball essentially on accident, killing her on accident. on accident she doesn't dislike like, gail <laughs> yeah she doesn't dislike gail which is a, a, a great nadja bit throughout the whole thing where like everyone's just like you hate gail because she's a woman and it's like that's literally not true yeah um <laughs> and again really funny performance there um and then weirdest thing of the episode and also, like, speaks to, like, the lore a little more now. Nandor bites Gale um, and then sh- proposes to her. She's like, ah, oh, we'll see. Like, we have all eternity to figure out, yeah. like, if we want to be together, which, again, a classic TV show. It's like, okay, Gale will be back in, in some regard. Um, and then she turns into, like, a werewolf bat um, and then flies away. Um, and that is essentially the end of the episode. Um, unless, did I miss anything? What was Guillermo up to this episode? Guillermo was just really focused on on making his master happy. You know, he just didn't right. want to see yeah. him go through with this. And nobody did. No one wanted to see Nander go yeah. through, but with proposing to and then turning Gale into a vampire. And yeah, I think that the episode is like, I think it's it's a pretty good episode. There's like lots of funny stuff in there. I didn't love the B plot just because I thought it felt like largely inconsequential. It was basically yeah. just like Colin Robinson and and laszlo both being like i i feel bad for this guy i should hang out with him and i <laughs> yeah. hope that that blooms into something going forward because we didn't get a ton of of those two characters together and the best thing about sitcoms is like the pairing possibilities it always yeah. ha- they, it, one episode it's these two characters another episode it's these two characters and you just keep mixing and matching yeah until you find it's something like that's ple- really interesting like in it's like the pleasant surprise in community when like annie and abed were like a very cool like duo yeah and exactly. like no one really saw that coming um but again like i i think this also shows like like oh yeah this was shot during covid because mm-hmm. it really felt like they could only have matt barry and um mark po- uh how do you pronounce his last name i think it's proch proch okay yeah um yeah yeah, they could only have Matt Barry and Matt Proch um, together on set that day. Uh, so they just, you know, rode around that, mm-hmm. which isn't like necessarily like a horrible thing. But sometimes, you know, when you watch enough TV, you kind of go like, oh, yeah, there's that's a clear like cheat that they're, they're trying to do here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it's a funny conceit. And then also Colin Robinson has the hilarious bit where um, 
he gets set on fire at the end. He's like, oh my God, oh my God, I'm on fire. And then yeah. he goes, I'm just kidding. Like, it's just fire. <laughs> um, and it's just like, oh, great. It's like really funny when he's animated and then just goes back. Um, my main issue with this episode, I never like when they do werewolf stuff. That's really interesting. I, I too yeah. have found those episodes to be sort of the least interesting, which is disappointing because like that's stuff that I really want to enjoy because like that's that's the fun lore of like this whole world and those are yeah major enemies of the vampires but yeah I've I thought one it was sort of an I thought it was a disappointing choice to not elevate the star status of the werewolves if that makes sense like I kind of wish that they had a few more maybe just one or two actors that like I would recognize a little bit more that were in that group yeah just like there's one dude in this episode, the guy that uh, is uh, like making out with Gail, who oh, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. why isn't this Eric Andre? Because it's like an Eric Andre type character. Like, <laughs> 100%. Yeah. No, no, that's a good point. And um, yeah, that that is also like adds like to the, yeah, because like Mark Hamill was in last season and he played like a vampire. Um, but this season is just like, yeah, I, I don't know. Whenever they have werewolves, even in the movie, it's just like they always are so like disappointing for some reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know, like, maybe it's because, like, it's hard, like, the, the werewolves don't, I, I I think this is, I'm just, like, trying to, like, figure out why I don't like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when they turn into werewolves, I feel like it's hard for them to be, like, funny characters because they're just monsters all of a sudden. Um, exactly. You know, it, it's just, like, there's no, like, dynamic after that because, like, at the end of the day, like, they're just gonna be like monsters and try to like rip you apart it's not like they can like say a funny thing um i mean in the in the first season it was kind of funny when they like jumped off off the building um Mm -hmm. and just essentially died because they saw a tennis ball um but that's like the only thing you can do with them i think um and i'm just like never interested like even with when the witches came in season two like that was just like a lot of fun like that was like just different and like funny and like again there was like interesting dynamics there was even like a a bigger terror like star that was like leading the witches that like is somewhat recognizable um but yeah and and yeah that i feel the same way about the movie like i, I feel like Stu is a is a really funny character but as soon as he come, becomes a werewolf i'm just kind of like oh and then like the whole weird like werewolf vampire thing was like interesting for sure and like adds to the lore but like I know. I, I I also felt like Gail was just kind of like a like I, I've seen that kind of character before, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I it, it doesn't take away from my liking of the episode overall. But like those are just some issues I had, um, and yeah, it, it's just weird that it always comes down to werewolves. I'm always just like, oh, it's a were-. like when she turned into a werewolf. I'm like, oh, we're gonna see some werewolves. Like this right. is like a werewolf episode. Like fun. Yeah, um, I think I think two things there. Uh, one you there's a reason that like dracula is like a more interesting character and movie than like the blob obviously because like there's a human face there and we can talk you know there's there's human there's humanity there um and you can see yourself reflected in that and and so when they turn into werewolves you lose that humanity on top of that when they are humans they kind of just play it as like dog jokes constantly like that's sort of like the 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 nail that they keep hitting but then on top of that, I feel like the werewolves don't lend themselves to the mockumentary format to begin with because there's nothing that there's like nothing to do with them. It's these vampires who are supposed to be mm. way cooler than they are, but they're so, so inept and so lame that when they do something ordinary, it's really funny. And so with the werewolves, you really can't get that because they actually are just like exactly what they're supposed to be. You know, like like these vampires are supposed to be cool. And these werewolves are supposed to be cool, but then the, they turn into werewolves and they are exactly what you want them to be. They're werewolves and werewolves are cool. So yeah, there's no like, sub, there's nothing, there's no second layer there. It's just, it's kind of just like There's a, no subversiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no subversive like, quality. Uh, yeah. Like the, the Babadook, like in <laughs> yeah. season one, the <laughs> reason he's so funny is like, he's just a guy. Like yeah. the Babadook's like a horrifying movie, but like in- <laughs> in what we do in the shadows he's just a guy and like that's the funny part of it and same with like the ancient vampire that du- or the baron yeah uh that that doug jones plays in season one Th- that's also funny because like he's like this ancient horrifying uh vampire and then the the turn is just like he just wants to kind of get fucked up and like he loves going out um 
and he just gets so drunk that he like falls and then like gets killed by the sun yeah um and again that's a subversive thing but it's different when he's just like if he just like killed people all the time um and was more or less you know just what we all expect when we see a vampire um and also he didn't he wear he wore wear like a red track suit at at one point too which was kind of funny um but yeah i I just want them to do more with the werewolves because it's either dogs or like actual werewolves which is like kind of scary um but yeah i don't know i i i'm glad they just like don't bring them in as much this is only like the second werewolf episode um of the series and i and i'm fine with that um but yeah, overall, um, any other lasting bits that you want to talk about in this episode? Not not particularly. You kind of hit on it earlier that like it's funny how these characters have all been living together for so long that they're completely unfazed. Like Nandor just doesn't have his underwear on or his pants on. Um, and it's just funny that they're all unfazed by that. And And that's part of the thing that I love about this show too is like nothing is taboo or macabre for these characters because like mm-hmm. they live forever. So like when laszlo and nandor hook up you know at the end of one episode last season yeah it's like that's just cool you know it's just like Mm because in a normal sitcom there would be consequences for that they would have to like reconcile with the fact that like are we are we bisexual are we gay like do we love each other like oh yeah but then in 90s sitcom yeah yeah but then in this show it's just like nah we just we just banged because like we're gonna live forever and like we got bored one night you know like it's just like so casual and the casual nature of that is is one of the things that i find so original about this show it's just the fact that they can do whatever they want yeah. because they're immortal and and you get a little bit of that in this episode and the on again off again relationship thing is is really funny but for the most part it was sort of like a uh a lesser episode definitely my least favorite of the three um but there's always just great performance moments you know we we hit it yeah. with with like Nadia throughout the episode just being like I don't dislike Gale I don't hate Gale one thing I'll say is that I'm a little disappointed that they didn't do more with Matt Barry through these first three episodes and yeah I, I, yeah I am curious if that is COVID related because obviously getting in he lives I would imagine in the UK and they filmed this in Toronto so I I don't know if he stayed in Toronto for the duration of the filming which was probably like many many months Or more likely, he had to do the whole two week wait out in quarantine thing where you if you because if you're traveling from country to country, you have to like it's either seven days or two weeks. It depends on the the place that you're coming from and going to. So I'm curious if the limited amount of Matt Barry is because of that or if it's just unrelated, if if they just didn't write a ton for him. Um, but that's something to keep an eye on going forward. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. That's a great point you brought up. Cause I, I think in the first episode they were together mostly. Um, but in two and three, like, I'm pretty sure he was mainly just with like Colin Robinson. Yeah. And he's just basically in that library set. And he's, he's in that library set, but yeah, no, I mean, that makes like complete sense. Um, but maybe we're just hypothesizing too much, but like, I mean, again, it might have been hard to get Matt Barry, and he's also filming like that next series for um, Toast of Toast of London. It's like Toast in America or whatever. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm 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 interested to see if we do get more Matt Barry, and it was just a coincidence that we didn't see too much of him in the first three episodes. Um, but Laszlo is like my favorite character. Like I, I think Kayvon Novak gives the best performance, but like. I love Matt Barry and he's just so fucking good in this show. And I, I hope to see more of him and it's not just like pornography and stuff. Yeah. Um, which is always fucking funny, but I also know he's like a three dimensional character and, um, the, the fucking, the Jackie Daytona episode, like really proves that in season two, uh, where he just gets his solo episode. Um, and yeah, I hope, I don't know. I always want to see more Laszlo. Uh, and I also want to see more Nadja, to, to be fair. Yes. I, I think there's a lot of her. But yeah, these first three episodes have been heavy with Guillermo and uh, Nandor, I think, mostly. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Colin Robinson sprinkles. Yeah, it definitely feels like there's a little bit more Colin Robinson so far. And and, and I like that. I, I like that Colin Robinson's getting in the mix a little bit more. I do want to see more of Nadja because Nadja is my favorite character. I just I think Natasha Dimitriou is like... It's it's like her everyone's everyone's nailing it. I think everyone's giving their best performance, but 
something i just think something about that performance particularly in that character like if it doesn't work then it really the show sinks um and she just nails it i think she also similarly to cave on novak just like every line delivery is interesting basically all i'm saying is like through these first three episodes i i love where all of these characters are i just want to see more of them going forward i hope covid didn't affect the show too much um yeah and and it's nice to have because uh, you know sitcoms it's like it's like you're hanging out with your buddies every time the episode comes on and uh and i'm happy to see my buddies in peak form and i'm happy to see that the show is is right where it belongs at the top of the comedy tv charts yeah exactly um and then uh at some point in the first week of october uh we'll be reviewing episodes four through six which are entitled the casino oh that's the chamber of judgment yeah the chamber of judgment and the escape so um i'm excited to to just keep watching this season um gonna be a lot of fun um strong start to season three and um we're glad we're hanging with our friends again uh, I've, I've been tyler i've been daniel and this has been the nothing notable podcast we got so many different types of pods we got sports comedy tv basically everything you can think of here so check out nothing notable and uh thanks for listening you're dead and out of this world.